Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. The vanity code is one word, Dwyer Boxing News. On iTunes, same thing, Dwyer Boxing News, one word. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Well, earlier today, in Melbourne, Australia, 3-1 to one underdog Anthony Mondine delivered and gave Sergei Rabchenko his first loss. Right? This win is sweet, more bear for us. Understand, even with a hedge. Let's say you started with $200. Right? You bet half on Mondine at 3-1 to one simply to win the fight and half on Rabchenko to win by KO. Understand off the hedge, you would have gotten a profit of, right, on the $100 on Mundane, $300 in profit. Minus the 100 bet on the hedge, you would net $200 in profit. Plus, of course, you would get back the $100 that you bet on Mundine to begin with. Do the math. Even with the hedge, you doubled your money. I'm talking about you got back the money you bet plus you got back that money again. You got 200% in profit. Do the math. Well, let me say this. Now Mundine is a WBC silver light middleweight champion. What that means for old timers like me is he is now Floyd Mayweather's mandatory at 154 pounds. Now Mayweather is probably the most popular man in boxing at the box office. Right? He has the most options. Guys are lining up to fight him. Right? Devin Alexander is fighting Amir Khan, and no doubt the winner of that fight wants to fight him. You have Mayweather's former promoter, Bob Arum, talking about the possibility of Mayweather fighting Manny Pacquiao if Manny Pacquiao gets by Chris Algieri. You even have Gennady Golovkin saying that he would be willing to drop down to 154 pounds to fight Floyd Mayweather. Right? All roads seem to lead to Floyd, who has announced that his next two fights are going to be his last two fights. Let me just say, I believe just from a boxing fan standpoint, just from a legacy standpoint, because understand, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, people are going to look back. And people are going to look at the resumes of the people Floyd fought. They're not going to remember the hype that's taking place right now in the moment. They're just going to look back and ask themselves, what did this opponent accomplish in their careers? I believe one of the absolute best fights that can be made in the sport right now just from a chess match, boxing intrigue, and legacy perspective. is Floyd Mayweather against Anthony Mundane at 154 pounds. Right now, make no mistake, I believe there are other guys who would give Floyd problems for a host of reasons, right? Amir Khan has faster hands than Floyd, can move around the ring. Right, I think if Khan gets by Devin Alexander, and that's asking a lot, folks, I think style-wise he would give Floyd all he can handle. Right? But make no mistake, Mundine is one of the toughest matches out there for Mayweather. Right? Understand Mundine is a guy who has a huge size advantage on Mayweather. You know, Mundine in 2007 was the WBA super middleweight champion. 
In other words, he's a guy who's already ruled the roost at 168 pounds. Did you know that as champion, he made something like three successful defenses of that crown? Did you know that at different times, Mundine has been other champions, right? He beat Daniel Gill years ago, the first time they fought for the IBO middleweight championship. Before he became the WBC silver light middleweight champion, he was a WBA interim light middleweight champion. Right? Mundine has been around a long time. More importantly, Mundine is 5'11". Floyd is 5'8 and a half, 5'9 ish. Mundine knows how to use length. Not everyone does. Right? Mundine is great defensively. He's one of the very best in the sport, in my opinion, defensively. Understand that Mundine knows how to operate behind a jab. He's hard to find. If you look at the storied career of Sugar Shane Mosley, understand both of these men fought Sugar Shane Mosley. Only one of these men stopped Sugar Shane Mosley. In fact, dare I say, only one man in Shane Mosley's entire career stopped him. Inside of the distance. And that's Anthony Mundine. Right? Mundine is the kind of guy who can lay traps. Understand, if you know how to use length, right? Length can overcome crisp counterpunching. Because the counterpuncher can't get close enough to you to land the counters. Understand a good jab can neutralize speed. Shane Mosley had the hand speed advantage on Anthony Mundine. Where did that get him? Right? I believe Floyd would have a hard time getting close enough to Anthony Mundine in the ring. Right? The fight wouldn't be fought at a frenetic pace. It wouldn't be about youth and volume and ambushes, as it would be against, let's say, Amir Khan. Now, this fight would be a full-blown chess match. Right? As of November 12, 2014, the way I play this fight is to not pick a side. I think it's too dangerous. The way I would play this fight is to take the over. Why? Because these are two of the best defensive fighters in the sport. Let me point out that both guys have been hit hard with some shots in some fights. Right? If you look at the Zab Judah Floyd Mayweather fight, you're going to see Mayweather's glove touches the canvas. If you look at the Shane Mosley Floyd Mayweather fight, you're going to see Mayweather's knees buckle. If you look at the Garth Wood Mundine fight, Mundine stopped. Right? If you look at the recent Joshua Clotty Mundine fight, Mundine gets stopped. Understand in boxing, even great defensive fighters can get hit hard on occasion, right? Prime Ali. Got dropped by Sonny Banks. Look it up. Right? But when these guys are on their games, it's very hard to hit them. The volume on this fight would be a bit depressed. Right? Mundine has the size advantage. Mundine has been in the ring with bigger men. Look at Mundine's resume. You're going to find out he's been in the ring with Danny Green, who at one point held a cruiserweight championship, and Mikael Kessler. Right? These guys aren't light punchers. Understand, this fight wouldn't be at middle or super middle. It would be at light middle. Right? Let's just say there's nothing Floyd could throw 
that would constitute punching power that Mundine hasn't seen already several times. Now it's true that Mundine lost to Daniel Gill in the rematch. Understand, Mundine can be outthrown. Right? A guy with a lot of volume can overwhelm Mundine, who's 39 and who's a chess player. Right? But that's not Floyd's game, is it? Understand, too, Daniel Gill is bigger than Floyd. Right? Physically, Daniel Gill's a former middleweight champion, for crying out loud. Right? Floyd at 5'8 and a half, 5'9. Against a guy with great defense as well, who's going to use distance, who's going to use length, would find himself in against a guy who has some Mayweather qualities. Let me also point out that Floyd has taken down taller guys. But he'd be kidding himself if he felt he could land his left hook against Mondine the way he did against Diego Corrales. Right? What I want Mayweather to think about is the idea that this fight would be a title fight at 154. Right? To me, that's a bigger test than fighting someone at 147, right? And I believe there would be more respect between the fighters, and I believe 20 years from now, as we look back, we would look at this match and we would understand the magnitude of the match more than if, let's say, Floyd were to fight and beat Amir Khan, who's already lost to Danny Garcia at 140. Right? Just from a boxing fan perspective, it'd be an intriguing fight just to see who could land what punch. Because neither of these guys is particularly high volume. Right? There could be interesting moments in this fight in terms of the strategies that the guys pursue. Right? Just to understand every round would have more intrigue as to who's stalking who, who's backing up who. Then let's say Floyd's fights against Marcus Maidana, and y'all know what I thought about that Maidana rematch before it took place, right? That was an exhibition, Floyd picking up an easy paycheck against an inaccurate guy on his front foot who's right in front of Floyd. Now picture Floyd against a taller man with far better boxing skills, far better defense, and less predictability with a long jab. Right? Now, I'm not saying Mundine hits like Thomas Hearns, but I want people to revisit that Hearns-Roberto Duran fight. Duran was a master boxer. He never got close enough to Thomas Hearns for that to make a difference. Right? Hearns kept him outside, then Hearns stopped him. Take a look at the Shane Mosley film. You're going to notice that Mundine sets a trap, Mosley runs into it, Mosley then gets hit hard. Right, Mosley goes to his corner. When's the last time Mosley has turned to his corner and said, hey, my back's tightening up. I can't continue. That's what happened against Anthony Mundine. So put me among those who just from a sport perspective, just as a guy who wants to see great fights and excellent in, excellence in the ring, just from a guy who doesn't buy the hype, and looks at fights against, let's say, Saul Alvarez, slow foot speed, right? Um, Marcus Maidana, you know, if it's a street fight, maybe Maidana has a chance. If it's a boxing match, he's inaccurate, he's slow, he's not ready to compete with Floyd in the middle of the ring. Those fights don't make it to the top floor of my elevator like a fight like this would. As I said before, Mundine's a guy who beat eventual cruiserweight champion Danny Green in one of the biggest fights in Australian history. Right? Mundine's a guy who beat eventual middleweight champion Daniel Gill in one of the biggest fights in Australian history. 
right? Mundine's a guy who successfully defended the title at 168. Think about it. We know Amir Khan. We know Devin Alexander. We know Marcus Maidana wouldn't cut it at 168. Right? Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. is fighting at 168. He's never held the title at 168. Here's a guy who held the title and who successfully defended it multiple times. Right? So let's hope that Floyd, in his last two fights, decides to fight as mandatory at 154. I think it would be a hell of a fight. What we found out, too, today is that a guy with a 69% knockout percentage, right, fighting on his front foot and coming forward, not only couldn't dent 39-year-old Anthony Mundane, he suffered his first loss. I understand the fight was competitive. I understand it was a split decision. Guess what, Casino? I'm not giving the money back. Thank you for the 3-1 to odds. I think Mundine's someone you need to look at Let's just say, if Mundine fights Mayweather, I don't see that fight ending early. I think that's a chess match. I think both guys would win their share of rounds. When's the last time you've been able to say that for a Mayweather fight? Right? I know the Marcus Maidana people want you to believe the first fight was competitive. I don't think it was. We know the second fight wasn't competitive. How many rounds on your scorecard did Canelo win against Mayweather? Did Robert Guerrero win against Mayweather? I'll concede Miguel Cotto won some rounds against Mayweather. That's the kind of fight we want. I believe Mundine is that kind of opponent, only he's bringing a length dynamic and a defensive dynamic that Cotto doesn't have. Think over the fight. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. And let me just say, I understand Mundine these days doesn't have the fastest hand speed. Right? But understand the defense, the timing, the length more than compensates. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.